get a 2014 Mirage with the CBT issues. It's got 132,000 on it. Uh, I've started. It's been flashing the D for off and on for about a year or so. But this last time we noticed it was real sluggish. And it was surging for gears, you know, like boom, 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 just just a weird sound. So I replaced the filters on it about a year ago and changed the fluid, you know, regular for what they recommend. But I've got a 2019 CVT and this is a 2014 that should interchange. I'm gonna kinda maybe try my best to make a how-to on all this stuff. There was a, it's by the dipstick. This circle plug right here. Of course it's twisted all the way where it needs to be took off. You push that in and then I took a screwdriver and twisted it as far out as it would go. And then I got it underneath the plug and popped it out. So that's how I got that out. But I'm going to uh, start taking it apart, disassembling. First, to move, remove the battery tray and the battery. And I'll remove all this next. This little fuse, little block thing, it slides on right here. It's got two clips on the back. Just pry them a little bit, pull up, and it'll come out. All right, I got the fan on. I don't know if you can hear me, but I removed the battery tray metal box. Um, there was a couple bolts here and a couple bolts here, and I, for some reason, thought this whole bracket was gonna come out, so I made it hard on myself and took all these out. There's a third one back here, but you don't have to take them out yet. You, find it. you can take the tray off first, then you can take these out, and it's just like a transmission mount. Um, get that one. But it's this. So, I'll try not to damage that. Next, I'm going to take off all this to the throttle body and just give myself enough room to get in here and start unhooking all the clips and all that stuff. So, all this I'm gonna go away. Alright, I got the radiator hose disconnected from the radiator itself. I'm still gonna disconnect it from back there. I guess the next step is to start removing all the sensors from the transmission itself. Um, I read that just take the 14 millimeter bolt out, the nut rather, out of the linkage instead of messing with this one. So you take this one out first, and then there's two 12s behind here. Let's see if I can get a light down in there. See them blue bolts? Take those out and just kind of peel them up and kind of go from there. On all the sensors, I disconnected this one already. I drained the radiator. It's still kind of dripping. I'm gonna let it do its thing clean up all that so I don't get any in my eye when I get back underneath there and just kind of tidy up I think I'm going to remove the throttle body itself and the sensors uh, I remove this to try to get I can't find my needle nose to get that off so I'm going to have to come up with something but uh, just remember any plug that you disconnect it you know make sure you don't break it there I they're kind of a pain in the ass sometimes, but, you know, probably don't got to disconnect a lot of them, but any of them you think, they're, if they're the same as like an LS motor, they're only going to go in one way and one plug. You just got to learn to plug each one back up. So I'm going to try to get most of this out of the way, if I can, to make it easier to get the transmission out. Alright, so I've got everything disconnected. As far as all this goes, this is loose. 
uh, the only thing I didn't dis or loosen up yet is the bolts to the bell housing to the motor. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, there were 12 millimeters. I will point them out when I get ready to take them out and all that. So, um, like I said, I drain the radiator, about to clean up all the fluid on the ground with a big old rag. And <clears throat> I took the transmission bolt out to the pan. The fluid was clean just because I just changed it not long ago. And, you know, I'm gonna drop the pan and check everything out from there. So I got the pan dropped and there was metal shavings on the magnets and I forgot to take the video of what it looked like. I guess it's the, on the metal, it's, or on the magnets themselves, it was a probably eighth to a quarter inch around of metal shavings. Um, might have been able to do a valve body on it, but the way the transmission has been acting, it's better for me and my sanity to not just throw a valve body on it and hope for the best. And I feel like just to go ahead and replace it, and that way I know it's lower mileage and I don't have to spend the money on a valve body and then spend the money back on the transmission. I got 500 in the transmission and just my time. Now, here's the next step as far as taking all this apart to get underneath there to get the uh, axle boot out of the transmission and all that good stuff. This is pressed in, it looks like with a screwdriver itself, but I know you gotta take that and pry it out. You drive your screwdriver in or a chisel or a nail, whatever you've got. I soaked everything down in WD-40. It doesn't look like it's rusted or anything that bad. I'm just getting older and as you can tell, I'm in my moccasins. But I'm getting older and I don't want to strain too hard and pop a big hemorrhoid or some shit. But I'm going to beat that out or up to where it's round again. And then that's a 32 millimeter. I've got an impact. I'm going to try to break it loose with that. And if I can't, then I've got a big pry bar. And I'll wedge, I saw you could wedge a screwdriver in and let it hit against that as it rotates back. So I'm going to try that and see if whatever, what works and what doesn't. All right, so I'm not sure if this is the right way to do this. So take this however you want. But I removed the caliper and the hub. There's two 17 millimeter bolts. I removed and I zip tied it up so that way it wasn't dangling. And then I removed the spindle from these, and that's a 17 millimeter as well. I loosened up this 19 millimeter, and I didn't knock down the ball joint or anything. On the driver's side, I loosened that up, and on this side, I didn't, and it still came out. Because here's the axle. I loosened that up for the tie rod. It's a 17 millimeter. And what I did on it was I got a full nut in there and just tapped on it with a hammer and it fell loose. I soaked everything in WD-40 just to help out. And then I pushed up on the spindle, took the slack out of the wire for, I'm guessing it's the ABS. And then I stuck my channel locks through the hub hole right through there and pushed on it and it came out so on the other side I got the axle out already and I just took a you know a pretty good sized flathead and just kind of wedged it and gave it a little push and it came right out so I'm gonna get back underneath there and pry out this axle right there on the transmission and then I should be about ready to drop the whole transmission if I'm not mistaken I gotta loosen up some things underneath there um, get my transmission jack set up get it ready just to hopefully just drop right out so here we go 
So underneath the car, you've got your, if you've changed your own oil, you'll know what I'm talking about. I'll show you, I'm gonna hold it up. It's this little oil catcher that kind of makes it go down so you can hit it in the pan. But your starter is right here. And you've got two 12 millimeter bolts on the bottom holding it in and then you got a little wiring right here and this little blade you got a 12 millimeter nut and then you get this little bitty wire that plugs into the side of the starter and this little blade i'm gonna clean all that up it's weird how the oil just drains right on top of all that shit but then your your flywheel right here or your flex plate i can't remember if it's the correct term but from what i'm about to gather on this is you're gonna have to turn your uh, pulley right there to pretty much create a revolution you got to get a socket or something that fits that and turn it to the right and it's gonna keep turning this on the flex and you should be able to reach your torque tor converter bolts in there should be four 19 millimeter or something. I've got them over there, but I do. I'll I'll get back on that one. I'm just trying to remove everything uh, that I can think of. This little dog bone thing I'll have to come off. Um, I put the two bolts back up in the top. Let me show you. I put these back in. For the mount that way i can take everything off from the lower side and then put the jack underneath it and take all these off so that way it'll drop right out i had to support the engine it should be good on the mounts but i don't want it to move so i'll put another jack underneath there all right so there is the flex plate and the torque converter bolts you rotate your engine and you get it so this little aluminum piece comes out this fucking thing slides too good. And we'll stay put. Alright, there's a little bracket right here. And two of them go in your oil pan itself. Well, one of them does, and the other one goes right here. I hope. I'm gonna put a little RTV. Like, shit, I don't know if it's gonna do anything or not. But I'm gonna put just a little bit right there around the edge of the bolt and the seal and maybe it won't create a leak taking that out sorry right here clean that up real good and maybe put a little bit of rtv on it it shouldn't the gasket hell i don't know it's worth a shot just so you don't have an oil leak but anyways you remove that it is right here looks like this those two go up in the oil pan itself or one of them does and then this is one to 12 millimeter one to 14 millimeter it goes somewhere in there you'll see it and then that's your dog bone bracket one bolt's longer of course the longer one goes in where the bushing is and these are torque spec, I'm sure. They mark blue. So we'll see. That's just a little gunk. Um, except clean up all that. So, the only bolt down here is those two blue ones on the side of the block. That's the only one, the heat shield from the catalytic converter. It's removed and We'll remove those two. I'll remove the torque converter ones first. And then those. Sorry, I'm, just, I'm trying to think. Ball. Oh, I see another one out there too. So that one will have to be removed from the block. Let's see if there's another one. Oh, there's another one up there too. Damn. That's going to be tight. Might have to remove this radiator hose get to those 
especially the one up top. It's the little blue ones. It's kind of neat they're blue, but. All right, so, torque converter bolts first, and then I'll put the transmission jack under here. I have to have something to hold up the engine as well. Uh, I might hook the cherry picker to it. That way it's out of the way from the bottom and just kind of help lift up on it. So, I'll get the jack set up and we'll just keep on moving forward. Before it gets hot outside, it's obviously the next day still dusk. Uh, I got the old or the new transmission in. I haven't hooked anything up. I've got 90% of the bolts in the bell housing. And what I did was I came from with the transmission. I came from underneath the car. The car's lifted up right now. But I came from underneath and then I hooked the cherry picker up to it and lifted it up from the top. Had to, because when you do this, your engine falls down at an angle. And if your transmission, if you lift the net level, then you're going to create this awkward angle. And it took a, about 30 minutes to get it <clears throat> right the way I needed it to line up and at least have just a little bit of a gap. You don't want a huge gap in it from what I've understood about engines and transmissions. You perfect, in a perfect world, you want them flat, flush up against each other. That way, everything's good uh, and you just bolt it up. If the engine and transmission's out together, that's that's ideal. I guess I should have bought the engine and transmission combo and then just put the new engine and transmission in it with 57,000 miles. But I got the knowledge of how to replace it now and the engine wouldn't be hardly anything. But that's besides the point. We're working on transmission. So yeah, I came in from the bottom, came up, and got it all bolted together. I think I got one bolt that I got to put in and the back side of the bell housing. And then it's all done. And then I'll start working my way from the bottom, all the brackets that I showed, the aluminum pieces, and working my way up to the top. Plugging in all the sensors while I'm down there, anything I can possibly do. So. I've rewatched some of the videos that I made yesterday and the fan is really loud and you can hear me but it's not crystal clear but I mean hell I'm not going to have a heat stroke just to record videos so hopefully <clears throat> this will help people out and I will kind of show again anything that I can think of that's down there that would help. Alright, so the moment of truth, I've got the transmission back in. What I've drained from the transmission pan from the junkyard was about one and a half quarts. So I'm guessing when they pulled it out, the axles and stuff, it drained a lot more, obviously. Since most people are getting around 4 to 4.3, you know, quarts with a pan drop. I just added three in there to start it and it was I know the dipstick doesn't matter but it was reading on the cold the high side of the cold with three in it so I know it still needs more so I'm gonna start it e-brake is up under almost 130,000 miles Showing a service engine light. Had a rough start. After that startup, this is what happened. The uh, I fucked up and put the where the filter is on the side over here. This little thing. This is an old one, but I didn't get this groove or this uh, 
flat part behind it. Like I thought, I was, I guess, in a rush, panic, or whatnot. But yeah, I fucked up and I shut the car off and it was blowing trans fluid everywhere. So, needless to say, I got the fluid situated, got it in, got that tightened back up, no leaks, fired it back up, and it showed two codes. It was like P093 or some shit and a 71 and it was solenoid pressures and you know everything was going in gear park reverse neutral drive B and now the tires are spinning in the right direction and so this morning I bought some cleaner and I cleaned the one that's a pain in the ass I got it out cleaned it up put it back in started it up no codes Hopefully it's a, that's the fix. And then what I did was I added all the fluids that I thought it would take. And I just drained. It's still kind of draining and trickling to see how many I've got. And what I'm going to do is I feel like I almost overfilled it. I'm not sure when that's done. I'm going to measure it out just to see for curiosity. But then I'm going to add 2.6 quarts back once they come in FedEx today um, I got six more quarts coming since I was already buying it and figured I might as well go ahead and get it for the next time hopefully it from my understanding on this this is a seven quart pan and it's got little thing dashes on the side and it's a little above two so I feel like I was about a half a quart low when my original drain or regional fill so hopefully that'll get it to where it needs to be all right i took it for a spin already uh just about a mile or two down the road this is with the new transmission in it it's probably going to be a terrible quality video wind's going to be blowing i checked the air conditioner everything else seems like it's okay and this this transmission was at a 2019 uh, wrecked Mirage with 57,000 miles on it. So. About half throttle, if you can still hear me. Going up a slight incline. It seems like it's doing okay. Shifts, you know, it stays in the 2500 RPMs roughly around 60. I can't remember what the other one did. I feel like it was surging from wanting to go up to 3000. I haven't really floored it yet. I'm gonna give it about three quarter throttle. Uh, it definitely feels a little bit more peppier for what it is. Yeah, I know 80 horse. It's not a lot to brag about, uh, but it's my wife's car, she, she likes it, uh, so that's all that matters, but man, I think it feels 10 times better, not just because it's new, but just the way it feels, it don't feel like it's surging or idling or funny or nothing like that, so... I'm just going to point this down for a second while I'm turning the subdivision. Make sure I don't hit any kids. Wave to my neighbors. All the ones that wave back. So, that being said, um, I think it does good. Awesome. Check for leaks. Kind of go from there.